Donald Trump hinting at a new world order where the U.S. might not come to the defense of some NATO members unless they help us first. In an interview with the New York Times, Donald Trump says he would decide whether to protect the Baltic states against Russian aggression based on whether or not they, quote, fulfilled their obligations to us. Trump's running mate was a little on the defensive this morning when asked about Trump's comments. Watch him here. I haven't seen the exact context of his words there, Brian, but, but I, I think Donald Trump's position very broadly with regard to our allies and with regard to treaty obligations and, and NATO is that it, it's time for our allies to begin to pay their fair share. Joining me right now is Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, Fox News strategic analyst. Colonel Peters, good to see you. Look, the reality is NATO members are required to pay 2% of their overall GDP, what they effectively are producing as an economy. Uh, and the U.S. is the only one doing that. So oh, does Donald Trump have a point here? They got to step up. No, he has no point. His statement, as well as his statement uh, uh, to the New York Times about Turkey, was the most destructive and idiotic statement on foreign policy by a presidential candidate in well, my life. Let lifetime. me share that with the viewers so they, they know what you're talking about here. Uh, Trump is quoted on Turkey saying, I give credit to him for being able to turn that around. Uh, some people say that it was staged. You know that. I don't think so. I don't think we have a right to lecture. Look at what's happening in our country. Uh, how are we going to lecture when people are shooting policemen in cold blood? Yeah, President Erdogan just put 10,000 people in jail, fired 100,000 civil surgeons, servants, judges, teachers. Uh, there's no free press left. He's subverted the Constitution. He's establishing an Islamic state. And, uh, and, oh, by, oh, and Donald Trump admires him for that. And back to the Baltics. Mm -hmm. Estonia. Now, this tiny little country, Estonia is paying over 2% of its GDP for defense. Latvia mm -hmm. and Lithuania, not wealthy countries, are doing their best. They were there for us in Iraq, Yeah, in but, you know, some of the others, I mean, you think about France, for example, Germany. I mean, they're not contributing what we're contributing. Don't no. we need to, in some way, play a little bit hardball with them and say, hey, guys, take some responsibility in this as well. We're happy to lead, but you well, we, got to join us in this fight. They, they, they've been in the fight. They have been in the fight. Now, if they're not spending as much as we'd like, Europe has some financial problems, and you know that better than I do, Trish. No, we got financial problems, too. Trouble. Yeah, and, and we're Girl. not spending what we should. No, Trish, there is no excuse for what Trump said. And what he did was invite Vladimir Putin to invade the Baltics. Now, I've been warning for months that the next president, whoever he or she may be, is going to face a provocation from Putin in the Baltics. And this was an invitation. It was like April Glaspie, our ambassador to Iraq a quarter of a century ago, telling Saddam Hussein we don't, wouldn't really care about Kuwait and if he did something in Kuwait. You can't do stuff like this. These little nations in Eastern Europe and the Baltics are our best allies in NATO outside of the U.K. And... Mm -hmm. And, and Trump's thrown into the wolves. Look, I have a very low opinion of Hillary Clinton. She would never have said anything that stupid. It, 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 forgive me, I, my, my uh, earpiece went out for a moment there, but I know you said you have a very low, appear, uh, low opinion of Hillary Clinton. You followed that with, but he never should have said anything so no, stupid. No, no. So, but in she, other words, she you don't like either would. one of them right now. No, no, I don't like. Well, she one, never would have. Well, no, Colonel. No, I mean, she's she, she's far she more calculating in terms time. of how things are going to be received in the overall press. I mean, this is, you know, to some extent, no, what keeps she, getting him in trouble. You think that he, he? She knows. She knows the rules of NATO. It's a mutual defense alliance. An attack on one is an attack on all. It's mm -hmm. given Europe. The longest period of peace in all of European history, which is a bargain for us. NATO is instrumental in winning the yeah. Cold War. And but Donald Colonel, Trump knows nothing like about it. Would you like to see NATO do more? Of course I'd like to see NATO do more. That's not what Trump said. Trump is threatening, inviting Putin to more provocations. But, and again, what more do you want the poor nations of Eastern Europe to do? They're doing all they can. Poland has been outside of the UK the best ally we've had since Poland gained its freedom from the Soviet from the Soviet yoke. 
I mean, this, there's no excuse for what Trump said. You can't paint over well, it. You know, it was I, stupid I, I, and you know, Not to defend him, but I think the point that he's making that a lot of Americans feel right now is that w w we continue to be the only sheriff out there. And we haven't been much of a sheriff recently. But in other words, we need, and this is, by the way, also what Hillary Clinton says, we need a coalition. We need the whole world on board with this. Uh, and, and right now, the biggest threat we all face is ISIS, not Vladimir Putin. It's ISIS. Anyway, Colonel, thank you so much. As always, it's ISIS good to see you, sir. Nukes. Colonel Peters, everybody. All right, Donald Trump will unveil his new tax plan any day now. And